Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Listen, <laughs> I woke up real early this morning. <clears throat> and, you know, things weren't right. I didn't know what, what was going on. You know, I woke up. You ever woke up disoriented, a little bit disoriented? I don't know why. I woke up a little bit disoriented. I looked around the room, and there's this, like, orange-colored light coming in the window, you know? And the air kind of felt funny, you know? Like, last night when I went to bed, the air was really dry, and, and, and uh, it was a really dry, hot day, you know? And evidently, overnight, some clouds came in, some moisture came in, some really moist air, really, really moist air came in. And this orange, like, orangey colored tinge was streaming in through the window this morning when I woke up. And I was disoriented. Didn't know what was going on. So I went to the internet to find out what was going on. And my internet wouldn't work. Nothing. So I said, gee, you know, what's, what is, what's going on? I was, I, I'll tell you, for about the first ten minutes, I was kind of disoriented. Well, turns out the internet just needed the router re, re, reset, right? And uh, I just don't know why. I was woke up a little bit disoriented. And that orange light kind of... I found out it was something to do with the clouds. The cloud cover or whatever was reflecting the sun in the window or whatever. It just, it just set me off. I was a little bit disoriented. Why I'm talking about this is... Is the markets right now are disoriented. Just like I was when I first woke up this morning. A little bit disoriented. The markets are disoriented this morning. And, you know, it took me a few minutes to, like, five or ten minutes to see, you know, and I had to reset the router and stuff and before I said, hey, you know, everything's fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. I was worried. I, I thought, gee, you know what, did they drop a, did the, was there some sort of a, a catastrophe or something, you know? I, I was a little bit worried. I thought, gee, you know, the Internet's down. That's funny, you know? And this orangish colored light... I didn't know what was going on, so I had to find out what was going on. And I got I got reoriented again. Well, you know the markets might become reoriented at a certain point, not too long from now, too. But they're disoriented right now, and and let's find out why. Let's open up the charts right here and take a look at what's going on. Now, one of the things we got going on is this is from the Economic Times this morning, and it says No Deal Brexit. Seems the most likely scenario. Now, a Paris, a no deal Brexit seems the most likely scenario for Britain's departure from the European Union. A French presidential aide said Wednesday, a day before Boris Johnson's visit to Paris for talks with President Emmanuel Macron. The official speaking on condition of anonymity rejected Johnson's demand that the so-called backstop mechanism to avoid border checks between Ireland and North Ireland be scrapped. He also contradicted Johnson's claims that Britain leaves the EU without a deal would not have to pay the, uh, the uh, 39 billion euros, or no, pounds. That's 47 billion, 43 billion euros, the divorce bill that's already been negotiated. Uh, it says the scenario that's becoming the most likely one of is, is no deal. The official said ahead of the first meeting between Macron and Johnson since the British Premier took office a month ago. So there we go. The most likely scenario for Great Britain is a no deal Brexit. So, you know, we pretty much know that the United Kingdom's barely keeping their, their self, themselves from going into a recession. Germany's almost into a recession. We got a huge slowdown going down in China. <clears throat> the United States economy's perking along okay. I'll just call it okay. Right? Uh, the Fed, right now, last night, said... No, this was yesterday, evidently, they said, that that rate cut that they did... Oh, by the way... That was just a recalibration. In other words, they're saying it's a one-off. One and done. Not part of a preset course for more easing. In other words, we're done here. 
we're done. Just that's all you're getting. One one twenty five point basis point rate cut. I'll tell you what. That just pulls one of the table legs out from underneath the market right now. But you know what? The markets. This is why I say the markets right now are are, are disoriented. They're thinking everything's fine. Now, see, me, when I woke up this morning, I was disoriented, and I thought things weren't fine when actually they were fine. I Just the light coming in the window, a little bit of a copperish color in the room, and the air didn't feel right. It felt really moist and damp and still, and it was really quiet out, and, and, uh, and, and my Internet wouldn't work, and I was like, what's going on with all this? I was like, this didn't add up, and I was disoriented, and I had to find out everything was okay. But the markets are just the opposite. They're disoriented. They think everything's okay. This is why they're disoriented, when everything's not okay. It's just the opposite. I thought everything was wrong when everything was really okay. They think everything's okay, and everything is going wrong. <laughs> And this is where they haven't caught up with reality. They're disoriented, these markets. So we see that that China and all these problems manifest themselves other places in the world. The markets is like the ostrich that's got its head stuck in the sand right now. At what point are they suddenly going to snap and they're going to say, hey, you know what? Everything's not okay. And they're going to panic sell. That realization could come pretty darn soon down the road from here, from where we are right now. So let's take a look right now at the silver price. We're looking at the silver price actually dropping. This is because the markets think, hey, everything's okay. <laughs> They're disoriented. And so we see the silver price dropping today. $17. It's down $0.09. Cents. Look at gold. 1497 so it's fell down four dollars and ninety cents it's down back below fifteen hundred bucks you know what when this realization hits the markets that everything's not okay and that the fed doesn't have their back right now the feds basically come out and said hey you know what we haven't got your back we're, we're ju we were just doing that one uh, little rate cut as 25 basis points as a recalibration. I think the markets are going to react at a certain point to all of this. Let's take a look at cryptocurrency right now. Now, we're a little bit early yet this morning for the markets. Markets haven't really opened yet. But uh, I'm going to take a look at the markets anyway, and we're going to predict where they're going to go. Uh, Let's take a look now at cryptocurrency, $262 billion. Now, it was $261 billion earlier. Let me just refresh the page right here. Ah, it's $264. So the cryptocurrency is starting to move up again this morning. 68.6% .6 Bitcoin dominance. I don't like to see the Bitcoin dominance quite that high. That's not good, you know. Uh, okay. We're looking at a price of 10163 for Bitcoin. So let's come back above 10000 It was below it yesterday. Uh, Ethereum, 189.77. XRP is $0.27. Cents. Bitcoin Cash is $360. Bucks. Litecoin is $74.45. Binance Coin is $27. Bucks. EOS is $3.62. Bitcoin SV is $135.58. Those are your top coins for the day. Uh, let's take a look at the Dow Jones. Now, this, this is from yesterday, and we're up 240 points on the day yesterday. From what I understand, though, in the futures, took a quick look at the futures. Looks like they're up 100 points today on that Fed announcement. Uh, you know, like I say, the markets are a little bit disoriented. Will they continue to move up today? I think that Fed announcement is going to have an impact on the markets today. I can't see it not. They've just basically told the markets, "Hey, we haven't got your back. We are we are going uh, we are going uh, uh, we're going to be tight again with money." The Fed basically it went back to saying we're going to be tight again with money. 
Yes, they have stopped their they're, they're stopping their quantitative tightening, but they're not lowering interest rates. They're way behind the curve. The Fed is right now. You know, the president. He's telling them, "Get up with the times, man. Get up. We're 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 got problems here. We need to have a hundred basis points. We need you to drop interest rates. A hundred basis points." We got a yield curve inversion, everything else. We need a hundred basis points. They're not going to do it. They've decided to be stubborn and not, and and they're already behind the curve. Uh, we could have we could have very difficult times in the market coming up. Very soon, too. Not it might not be very long. It even could happen later this afternoon. We get the market suddenly fall out of bed because of what the Fed has said, you know, and and. Uh, and now, Friday, evidently, they're, tomorrow, they're going to have a, a, a meeting at Jackson Hole. And the markets are could possibly be waiting to hear what the Fed's going to say at, at Jackson Hole. But as far as I'm concerned, they've said enough. What they just said <laughs> was more than enough. Now let's take a look at oil. Oil is up uh, 58 cents on the day. 1%. One, 1 just... It's up on the day. So oil's been creeping up. The oil price has been creeping up. $56.26 for sweet light crude. Let's take a look at U.S. Treasuries today. And we're getting more bounce back in the Treasuries uh, from the yield curve inversion. The Treasury yields are rising. Uh, on the long end of the curve, uh, we're seeing four basis points on the U.S. 30 year. So, and the short end of the curve is falling. But only falling marginally, but still this is moving away from the yield curve inversion if these yields can rise up above, especially the long end of the curve uh, if it rises up higher and we get the short end of the curve falling back. So this is moving against the yield curve inversion, but it could change directions very quickly and go back to what it was doing, you know, but because these movements aren't huge, they're medium sized moves four basis points you know we were seeing like 11 basis points uh to the downside on the uh, long end of the curve you know a few days ago and we could go right back to that really quickly take a look at the u.s dollar index 98.21 and we see the dollar today basically going sideways it's strong dollar but it's going sideways but it's bouncing up and down with quite a little bit of volatility Take a look at China now. Now here's one of the bigger things in the economy, not counting what's happening with Germany and the United Kingdom. China is one of the big things in the economy. Actually, it's the elephant in the room. China is is really big. This is really big, and the Chinese economy is slowing slowing down really really fast. And this is one of the biggest things, one of the biggest indicators that we're heading toward this recession. Uh, it's it's uh, slowed to 4.6% in June. <clears throat> They've lost momentum, China. If we look at their, their retail sales here in this chart, we can see it's just basically fallen down lower and lower and lower. So much for their plan to make themselves into a consumer-based economy. Now, we got thousands, thousands of businesses moving out of China and, and moving into other places. China's going to undergo a massive slowdown very soon. So we're going to have three economies there, three big co economies that are going to be moving into recession in the next few months, next number of months. Germany, United Kingdom, and China. That's, that's huge. Question is, can that carry the United States into a recession? I think the answer is yes, most definitely, and I think Brexit's going to be the next big thing that's going to affect the economy. Hot in the heels. That that's if Deutsche Bank can hold together. We got to keep our eye on Deutsche Bank all the time. But so it seems like some sort of a mystery here with Deutsche Bank, and it's got me perplexed. You know, uh, how that every time they start to drop down into the territory where their stocks should fall off a cliff. It goes back up a little bit. 
It's like there's a mystery buyer of Deutsche Bank stock, you know? And we all know eventually they're going to fail. So who's ever throwing their money in there, you know, uh, seems to me like somebody who doesn't care, <laughs> you know? And that just reeks of, of, of uh, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to speculate who's throwing their money at Deutsche Bank to buy Deutsche Bank stock whenever it drops down to about 5.85 euros. They buy in, they put it back up to 6.2. And then it seems like they stop. They're just looks like they're just buying enough to keep Deutsche Bank afloat. Maybe it's a method of kicking the can down the road uh, as far as Deutsche Bank's concerned. Well, thank you guys for listening to this report. We'll catch you again with another report very, very soon. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate those thumbs ups. Uh, it helps to keep my videos where they can be seen. You know? Uh, rather than having them shoving them into a back closet and then shutting the door on the closet. You know? Listen, bye-bye, guys.